Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we finished setting up PyCharm. So by now, you should have Python or some program, whether it's PyCharm or some other IDE, to write and execute your Python code installed, set up, and ready to go. In this video, we're going to learn about a few of the data types in Python, variables, and how we can manipulate those variables. So with that being said, let's just get right into it. Alright, so when you first open up PyCharm, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new project. You're going to come over to File, come down and click New Project, and up here, you're going to want to specify the path where you want to store all of your project files. You're going to come down and click Create. Once you've created your new project, the next thing you're going to want to do is create a blank Python script. To do that, you're going to come over to File again, and you're going to come down one further and click New. You're going to come over here and click Python file and then this new window over here will pop up and in here you can name what name your file whatever you want come down and click OK I already have a new project open up and new file from last time so I'm not going to create a new file so once you have your project and your blank Python script created if you come over to the leftmost panel you'll see all of your files associated with your project I'm going to open up the file from the last video by expanding this top window here and coming down and clicking the Python file we created in the last video. Alright, so there's a few settings we're going to want to check and make sure are enabled within PyCharm before we get started. We're going to come over to File, come down to Settings, and within the Settings window, we're going to click Appearance and Behavior, click Appearance, and then right here you can actually change the theme of PyCharm if you accidentally clicked one that you don't want. So right here you can come over, there's a few options right here you could choose from. If you're having trouble read, reading some of the font within PyCharm, you can use custom font, you can change the font, and you can actually change the size. So if we change this to 16 for example, and click apply, you'll see that the font of the whole PyCharm program actually changed. So I'm just going to change this back to 12 real quick. Another feature that's very nice to have enabled in PyCharm is its autosave feature. So if you go back over to Appearance and Behavior, come over to System Settings, and if you come over to Synchronization, you can check this box here and have it save your files automatically if you're idle for X amount of seconds. I'm going to change this to 60 and then click Apply. Alright, so the last setting we're going to want to make sure we have checked is Line Numbers. We're going to come down to Editor, General, and then to appearance. And if you come over to your right, you can see the checkbox that says show line numbers. Make sure this is checked. It's very helpful to have. And then click apply and then OK. So now that we have those settings in place, we should be good to go. So data types, there's three that we're going to cover in this video, strings, integers, and floats. So if we take a look at the script that we wrote in the last video, this portion of that script is actually a string. I know it's a string because PyCharm will go through and highlight different things in the program that have meaning. If it highlights it green, that means it's a string. A string is defined as anything between two double quotes. So if we had something like Bob, for instance, this would be a string. It can also be defined as anything between two single quotes. So if we had Jill, for instance, this would also be a string. Now you might be wondering to yourself, what's the difference between using double quotes and single quotes? Well, if we had something like that's her ball. This is a case where we'd want to use double quotes because if we use single quotes, it wouldn't define it as a string because we have this extra quote within here. I should also point out that you could put just about anything you want in between the two quotes on the end. You could put characters, numbers, or even special characters, all of which are valid to be within a string. All right, so the next data type, it's an easy one, an integer. It's just any whole number, so one, two, three, and so on. And a float is also pretty simple. It's any decimal point. So if you had 1.1 or pi or something, that would also be considered a float. So that's simple enough. But let's say you write a program, and that program grabs users' names. How would you go about storing that? Well, you would actually have to use a variable. A variable is just like the variables you would use in your math class. They store data. There are a few rules you have to follow when programming and using variables. You can use characters, numbers, and underscores, but you cannot have a number in to start off your variable. So, for example, if we wrote this program, 
and the user's name happened to be Bob, we can name this variable name equals Bob. We could also do name one equals Bob, name underscore one equals Bob, but what we couldn't do is put some number out in front of the variable because that would be invalid. A variable can also be as long as you want it to be, but generally speaking, you want the variable to be as short as possible, but also as descriptive as you possibly can get it. So let's just come through and finish naming the rest of our strings. We'll do name two for this one, and we'll come down and name this one sen, just for sentence. And let's add in two more variables. We'll call this num1, and we'll make this an integer and we'll make a num2, and we'll make this a float. So we'll do 1.1. Going back to the programming example where you're grabbing users' first names, let's say you're writing this program and you wanna make a note to yourself, you can do this by adding in a comment. To add in a comment, you wanna use the hashtag or pound key, and then everything following that will be a comment which is ignored by the Python interpreter. So you could just use plain text and make a note to yourself about what specific things are doing within your code. So to add a comment, I'm going to just come up here. I'm actually going to do it to all three of these. And to do what I just did here, if you hold down the Alt key and left click, it'll add in another cursor and you can just type in stuff here. So let's say I wanted to add comments to all of our variables here, but I accidentally clicked this one. You can hold down Alt again, click here and then that cursor will disappear. To get rid of all of them, you just click anywhere. So I'm gonna add in a comment here. You use the pound key, and then we can type in whatever we want following the pound key, and the program will actually ignore what we put after it. So I'm just gonna note string here, so that we know this is a string. I'm gonna come down here, say this one's an int, come here and say this one's a float. So now that we have our data types assigned to some variables, we can actually start manipulating the data within those variables. So first off, let's just print all of our variables to the terminal and see what we get. To print all this out, we're gonna to need to run the script. To do that, we can right click, come down to run, or we can simply come up to the top toolbar, click run, and then click the very first option. And this will run the Python script. And if you look here, we have Bob, which was the first one written here, name one. We have Jill, which was name two, and that was the second one we placed. And the reason that it's going through in sequential order is because Python is a top-down interpreter, so it'll read the first line first, second one, third one, and so on. So if we were to take name two and place it up here, and name one and place it below that, and we ran this script again, we actually see Bob and Jill will flip. So that is one thing you're going to have to be careful if you accidentally name a variable before you print it out or use the variable before you actually define it, then you're going to get some errors. And actually we have this hello world left. We can take this to get rid of it simply. We can actually just comment that out. And since we have a comment there now, the Python interpreter will just skip over it and we won't get the hello world anymore. We'll just get all of our variables. All right, so since all of our variables printed out the way we expected them to, we can actually start changing them a little bit. For integers and floats, we can use all the basic operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We can also use floor division, which will just return a whole number. And we can also use modulus division, which returns a remainder. If you're not too sure what floor division and modulus is, you can come down to the Python console, and in here we can practice this a little bit. So if we did five, floor 2, we should get 2 instead of 2.5. So if you take a look, we actually get 2. But if we just did 5 divided by 2, we actually get 2.5. So if we did modulus, modulus is denoted with the percent sign, we should get a value of 1 because 2 goes into 5 2 times and it has a remainder of 1. So if we come back up to our script and we take a look at num1, we can actually start changing this by doing just basic operations. So if we wanted to add one to this, we can just plus one. And when we print it out, it'll give us a value of two. We can also come down to our print function and we can subtract or add away stuff. So if I take away 0 0.1 from num2, it should give us a value of 1.0. So if we run this script again, 
and we take a look at our numbers, we'll see that we do in fact get two because we added an extra one here and we'll actually get 1.0 because we took away 0.1. Another thing you can do is actually add two variables together. So if we made a num3, we can actually do num1 plus num2. And this will actually add these two values together. So if we just come down here and change this to num3 and run this script again, we can see that this gives us 3.1, which would be the result of adding these two together. All right, so last thing, I promise, changing our strings. How do we do this? There's actually quite a few ways we can go about doing it, but I'm just going to cover a few in this tutorial. One way we can do this is by using the addition operator. It'll just combine two strings together. So if we wanted to say Jill and Bob, for example, we can do plus another string that is and, and then put in name underscore one, which is Bob. And if we run this, we're going to get something a little bit unexpected. It's actually just going to sandwich those together and it's going to be Jill and Bob. You know, it's missing those spaces. So we actually need to come in here and put a space here and here because when Python uses the addition for strings, it just combines them together. So if we run this now, we'll get our expected result, our Jill and Bob. So let's say you wanted to add a number to the end of a string. After seeing the last example, you might be tempted to just do plus one. That makes sense, right? But if we actually come up and run the script, we'll get a huge error because we cannot combine a string and an integer. We can only combine two like types. So we're gonna need to convert the integer into a string. To do this, we can use Python's built-in string function. We can just type in str, open and closing parentheses, and this will actually take the integer value and convert that into a string. So if we run this script again, we'll see that we'll get bob1 instead of the error. So why use this function instead of just putting two double quotes around the number one? Well, if we had a variable, for instance, and we wanted to add that to the end of a string, we would actually have to put this within the function because if we just put two double quotes around it, it would just print out the name of the variable instead of the assigned value of that variable. So if we put num1, this will give us bob2 instead of bob num1. So the string function is very helpful when you want to add a number to the end of a string, but what do you do when you want to perform some mathematical operation on a string that has a number in it? So if we had a variable, let's call it imposter, and we set that equal to three, but the data type is a string. So how can we you know, add one to that without getting some error? Well, we can actually use the int function, which will take this string value here and convert that to an integer so we can perform those different mathematical operations that we wanna do. So if we change this back to num1 and we add imposter to it but we would have to use this new int function which will take imposter and convert it to an integer so if we run this script we should get a value of five which we do here but if we took this out and ran the script we'll get an error because we're trying to add a string and an integer value which you can't do all right, so the last way I'm going to show you how to manipulate strings is through the use of methods. If you're not sure what a method is, don't worry about it. We're going to cover more about what they are when we talk about classes. For now, all you got to do is just know how to use them. So if we take a look at the little bit of code that I wrote here, this portion of that code is a method. The dot lower and open and closing parentheses, the dot title, and the dot upper. Those are all methods. What the dot lower method will do is take everything in name one or whatever variable you have and make everything there lowercase. The dot title will take all the individual words that are separated by a space and capitalize them. And then the dot upper will make everything within the string uppercase. So we will just go through and delete all of our print statements here. And then we'll run and see what we get. If we take a look at the output in the terminal, we'll notice that Bob, every letter is now lowercase. Originally, we had a capital B in the beginning. This is due to the dot lower method. In the second one, we use the dot title method, which will capitalize the first letter in each word. 
So we had don't forget to subscribe. And now you notice that D, F, T, and S are capitalized when originally they were all lowercase. The final method that we used was the dot upper method, which will capitalize everything in the string. So we had that's her ball, and now everything in that sentence is capitalized. So that's it. I know there's a lot of information thrown at you all at once. I would definitely recommend watching this video over again if you need to, and definitely practice everything we covered in this tutorial. Being able to do everything we covered on your own is going to be essential to learning how to program in Python. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.